Everything you need is already inside of you. The world would not be what it is without you. When we begin to create change within us, we begin to create change in the world around us. Your journey to becoming your best self as the whole person starts right now. Hello and welcome to the Become Your Best podcast and webinar series. I'm your host, Lauren Sweeney. I'm excited that you're joining us here today. Let me tell you about our guest, Maria, and then we'll pull her onto the screen and have some interesting conversations. Maria is from New York, so it's a little bit colder for her than where I'm at in California. And she's an award-winning New York-based contemporary art advisor, author, and curator. She's a Harvard graduate, originally from Venezuela, and her first monogram out there was published by Point Leaf Press in 2013. So she is not new to the space of being successful. She has worked on product collaborations with famous artists, and she and her projects have been featured extensively in national and international publications, including the New York Times, the Style Section, the New York Times Magazine, the Wall Street Journal, the Huffington Post, oh my goodness, Vogue, L, the list goes on and on. We're excited today to talk about how to use creativity for making an impact, for having profits, and really, in the end, changing lives. Welcome, Maria, to the podcast. We're Thank glad you, here. Lauren. I'm so happy to be here, and everybody who is listening and watching, I'm so happy to be with this uh, amazing community of people who are actually changing the world because I believe that people who listen to podcasts have an enormous desire to grow and to improve and this is the type of people I love to connect with. So hello and thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome, Maria. So talk to us about, did you ever have, we have a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of leaders that listen to our podcast, both. And a lot of people that have an intuition about making a change in their lives, you know, we're approaching the new year. And then when this launches the audio version, it will be the new year. And what would you say, did you ever have any fears or doubts or nerves in terms of career pivots and, and the success you've had today? Look, I mean, it's an excellent question because I actually was a corporate attorney uh, 13 years ago, and uh, that was a very safe job, but I was miserable. And I, um, I did make a lot of money in that job, and I had an insurance and a 401k and a car. You know, they had a, a driver every night because it was late and whatever, but I hated it with all my might. And it took... 13 years, literally, I mean, like, like a lot of, it took nine years for me to actually, for, you know, I said 13, because you have to go to law school, and you have to pass the bar and all that, and then, you know, practice. And so I practiced as a corporate attorney for many years. And I was very confused about what was going to be my next step. Because in the beginning of me pondering, really, I hated, I cannot be here anymore. I had a lot of fear, obviously, because I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew that I was not going to just retreat to be a, um, a stay-at-home mom. My, my child uh, was born when I made this decision of quitting that job. And so I understand the fears, but I think that the pain of staying in that job was so much worse than actually facing the uncertainty of starting something from scratch. And I really did a very radical shift because I am now an art advisor. I build art collections for people. I curate exhibitions around the world. I consult for companies on the topics of creativity and innovation, thinking outside of the box um, in a big, big, interesting ways. And pivots and changes are really my specialty because I have experience in myself. But I think also that in this world that we live, that it, it has basically pulled the rock from under us for a long time now. Mm -hmm. Our only constant is always change. And that is uh, something that was said by a Greek philosopher. It's not my quote is a Greek f philosopher for, you know, 3000 years ago. And he was the first one to to record that quote, the only constant is change. And so I think that for people who have reevaluated their lives throughout the pandemic, which we are still in, 
the yeah. pandemic. The people who actually have thought that they are not enjoying what they do anymore. People who want to refresh. It, you don't really have to be radical. I always uh, consider, uh, you know, I was radical in my my shift from being an attorney to becoming what I am today. But after in, in the past 13 years that I have run the business, I have had to adjust, pivot, shift, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the time because it's a necessary part of being an entrepreneur is being able to adapt and being able to suffer setbacks and recover from them and figure out what didn't work and then just do it again. And today I read something really funny on Instagram. Somebody posted a, a quote saying, I don't make mistakes the same mistake twice. I make it five or six times to figure out, you know, like to make sure that I really got it right. And right. I, I identify with that so much because as you know, yes, you know, if you don't make mistakes twice, you make the mistakes as many times as you need to to learn the lesson, right? And and, mm -hmm. and to kind of understand what the impact of that mistake is in your business. And so I think everybody who's listening i'm here to prove to you that it's possible and that actually there are different ways of shifting changing adapting uh, and starting something new and that's also why i wrote my upcoming book with um harper collins that is called how creativity rules the world the art and business of turning your ideas into gold because i want to bring my story but also the deep research that it took me to put this book together into showing others that it's possible to do these things for you if you practice certain skills and and if you build certain habits and and it's not um, something impossible or you know expensive those things happen within each one of us we just have to be able to nurture by will and design those habits and methods and techniques every day if needed you know if people really want to get to a place of confidence where they rise up for themselves because that's the point of you know the point of life is that you have to really rise up for yourself and to do the things that make you happy and not your husband or your parents or you know society it's ultimately we owe our happiness and our fulfillment to ourselves yeah, I love that. So did you face any setbacks or pushback, especially from others? A lot of times we talk about, you know, people pleasing or working on gate. I love that you mentioned confidence. We're all about that as well so that you can have more clarity so you can set better boundaries. When you were leaving law and moving into the space that now you find yourself so successfully in, did you have people tell you you're crazy? What are you doing? All of that. And how Absolutely. did you navigate it? Yeah. I mean, I think that my husband, for example, he never said you're crazy, but he said, look, you don't have clients in that space. Nobody knows you in that arena. Are you sure of what you're doing? And, and, you know, he was very hesitant, but he was supportive nonetheless. But I, it was not like, yes, go do this. I'm, you know, it was more like, oh, well, if this is what you want to do, I'm going to stand by your decision, right? But just mm -hmm. be aware that this is going to be a very difficult battle, you know, for you to actually be out there trying to build something from scratch where nobody knows you. And um, my parents obviously were like, shocked because to them it was the ultimate thing to have a daughter who had gone to Harvard Law School and uh, practiced in big New York law firms so they couldn't even like understand what was I like if it was joking or you know <laughs> I mean like what, what was it about so but I, I honestly I, I didn't really care about my I, I care about my parents but I didn't really care at that point what they thought anymore because the reason why I went to law school was to please them and so mm -hmm. I was already like no I'm not really going to be that daughter who's pleasing the parents anymore I'm actually going to do this for myself and so I was more concerned about my husband's you know support or lack if he would have not given it to me because that was the person I I'm still living with, right? And so that was right. very important to me. And then um, a couple of people were like, I can't believe you're going to leave a job that is so 
stable and secure and that has given you so much where you it's like a big job it's a big law firm you've been there for a while you work on great deals they take such good care of you guys and the bonuses mm -hmm. are amazing i was like well work there and you'll see another story you know what i mean i was like go sit on my desk all day and night waiting for the papers to drop and then you'll have a very different understanding of what it is to be successful and so yes there there were lots of pushbacks and lots of uh you know people kind of like questioning me or i also called people who actually are in the same business that i am today and they were not supportive at all. One of them wow. was, one of them was very nice, and she said, "Well, look, I I spent a lot of money going to this masters, uh, you know, for business and art and whatnot, and I'm yet to see the return on that because I have not been able to find find a job like that actually matches all the desires that I have. I mean, she was entrepreneurial, but not like me. And and then um, I spoke with another girl, and she said, "Look, you're never going to be successful. Everybody's going to turn their backs at you." because you haven't been in this business ever and it's like it's a click it's uh, you know and I was like oh okay you know what I, I listened to both of those women and then I I hung up the phone thinking to myself you know what that's great that they say this but I'm me yeah. and I'm a, an individual with a whole other different uh perspective and I am equipped differently and I you you know the thing is that I told myself I can't fail because I'm already leaving something that is really good in a way of like the stability that I hate. And I can't see myself going, let's say, even if it's something that was slightly different, but related to being an attorney that would have put me in an office, let's say management consulting or even a bank or I was like, I don't want to be in an office with people anymore. I don't want to see anything. I don't want to have nine to five. And, and it, it's not even nine to five. Like when you're an attorney it's, or, or in those jobs, pretty much. Right. It's like it's, it's like nine to midnight. And, and it's funny because I really thought in my heart those things had gotten slightly better. And this week, past week. I read the story of all these uh, young analysts from Goldman Sachs. I didn't know this because I have been paying attention to all the things that these analysts from Goldman Sachs, young analysts this year, created all this anonymous campaign to say how much hours and how many hours and how much they were really abused in terms of timing, anxiety, mm -hmm. and all the things that they were having while working at Goldman, which was a client of the law firm when I used to work at that law firm wow. was one of the main clients. So the thing is, I thought those things had changed a little bit even because of the pandemic and they didn't. And because this group of young people came forward with their complaints, which were substantial in terms of like lifestyle and how hard it was for them to navigate the amount of work that they had to do and the hours that they had to do, then a lot of things changed. And I don't know if they're gonna really be sustained changes over time. But what I'm saying is the the way that corporate America has actually put people through the ringer is just unhealthy, unfair. Uh, I mean, there are amazing companies that are lifestyle companies too, where people actually can have a life and do a fulfilling job. I'm not saying, I mean, we're already through the great resignation phase of, you know, our history. And so I'm not the one who's going to tip, you know, the scale one way or the <laughs> other. But yeah. what I'm saying is, uh, th what I'm saying is that it's not a new thing and it hasn't gotten that much better, even with all the working from home arrangements and things like that. People are not necessarily thrilled to be serving a master that they don't like or an industry that they don't like or, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that again, like you may be listening to this and you may be thinking, well, I love my employer. That's fine. It's great. I mean, I'm, it's not everything. It's not like everybody has to quit their jobs tomorrow, but if you are contemplating it, I have to say it's the best thing I did for me and for wow. my, my life and my future and the, and the happiness. It's been the third best, without a doubt, the best 13 years of my life. Wow, Maria, amazing. You know, you said something, you said, since I've already tried, you know, and been, become successful as a lawyer, I knew I couldn't fail because I had already seen the success and I wasn't happy. Right. There was something neat in there that you knew I can't fail because really you were seeking happiness instead of like, not that you're not financially successful today. You are, 
but you, you knew that. Talk more about that point. You know, it was more like a promise that I did to myself. Right. And it's, it's, it's like against all odds, right. People were like, yeah. Oh, questioning why I should doing this. That I had to start something from scratch when I was 32 or whatever, 33. And, you know, it was for me, like, I, it never, it never occurred to me that I couldn't do it. Right. And, and I was invested in the idea of success with grit and determination and passion. And also I was such a blank slate. So mm -hmm. it's, I came to really create and disrupt a lot of things in an industry that people did not imagine new ways of doing things. And I came to do all those things because I was an outsider. And so I was an outsider and I didn't have, let's say, I didn't have a beef with anybody. I didn't have a lot of information on the background of a lot of people. So I just went in with, you know, an open heart, blank slate, shaking hands, you know, being enthusiastic about things because I had the energy and stamina, the desire of doing things, right? And I was seeking happiness, like you say. So when you're seeking mm -hmm. happiness and you're in a completely different industry that is a lot more fun than being an attorney no matter what everything is actually you know <laughs> it, like yeah you can work at a funeral you know parlor and it's more fun than, than being an attorney you know so like anything is and so like I had this you know this this kind of like energy right and aura mm -hmm. in me that was projected outside too, meaning like people actually responded very positively to what I was doing mm -hmm. because I came with like a completely different out, you know, outlook of what I was, you know, going to do and who I was going to reach out to and how I was going to build my business. And so, you know, early on, I started getting confirmation with the yeah. type of clients that I was getting, the type of things that I was, you know, how I was getting positive feedback from people in the industry and like this new clients that I was getting that I was on the right path. And so that, you know, that initial thrust was very important to me. And you may not experience this initial thrust right at the beginning. It might take time and sure. effort. And that's important also for people to know, because we also live in the era of instant gratification. And if doesn't, mm -hmm. if something doesn't work at the first try, then people quit. And that's not how anything is. Anything meaningful takes time, effort, and creativity, yeah. and, and, and malleability, and flexibility, and, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of soul searching, and a lot of uh, honesty, and a lot of authenticity. And I think that if people can make sure that those ingredients are there in their pursuits, then they they will be able to get the return of what whatever it is that they are looking out in the world to do or put out there or you know or invent because it's um, I, I wrote in my book it's these are habits and things that people have done for the past mm -hmm. six hundred years and. They have, I back them up with history. I back them up with science. I back them up with, with facts because a lot of people feel that being creative and it, it's like some sort of like God given talent that you receive at birth, <laughs> uh, you know, like some muse shows up. It's not. It, creativity requires work and discipline. And I developed a methodology for that, but it's um, actually based on history because I, I have been so curious about this topic for so long, especially, I mean, right after I transitioned, I wanted to know what artists do to come up with ideas. I wanted to also know what entrepreneurs do to come up with ideas. And so I asked everybody I could. I took notes of everything. I took, you know, I have recordings. I have videos. I have interviews that I have done. Everything that I have created on the background is now on this book. It's 13 years of work and wow. research and curiosity. I think that people have to really reclaim their curiosity again. We are so used to getting things so easily on Google and whatever, but, you know, keep clicking. Do, do not stay with the first answer. Do not stay with whatever it is at face value. You've got to really, and never take answers that are not satisfactory as final or definitive, because yeah, I think that, lovely. you know, that's the space for creativity, mm -hmm. for innovation, for disruption, for leadership, right? I mean, and, and like not taking things just 
like this is the final answer. I think there is always one more answer. I think there is always one more way of doing things. And that is what we need in this day and age where we're living with so much uncertainty, but at the same time with so much space to create. I love that. Talk to me about what they can find too on your website. And I know you have some freebies. So Maria's website is her first and last name. So M-A-R-I-A, Maria, her last name, B-R-I-T-O dot com slash book. Tell us what they'll find there. Well, I am thrilled to offer my creativity course online, which normally is $297. I'm giving it away for free if you pre-order mm -hmm. my book. It's a very comprehensive program with more than 40 videos in different modules and PDFs and recaps and exercises mm -hmm. and bonuses. It's very robust. I'm very proud of that program, but I'm even more excited about the book. And so mm -hmm. I am thrilled to generously giving the access to the course for free. If you pre-order my book, which is everywhere right now, it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, independent bookstores, indie bound bookshop, all those Apple, it's everywhere. So if uh -huh. you email the confirmation to book at mariabrito.com, we will give you grant, grant you access immediately to the course. So I think that's okay. exciting because without ideas, we are going backwards, right? Like we need ideas for progress. We need ideas also for you, your new business or the business where you are or the company where you are. You need ideas to understand how to shine and how to differentiate yourself from other people. Because at the end of the day, we all want to be recognized for our unique talents, but we also want to bring them to the world. I love that, Maria. Well, you touched on it earlier, but we love to ask a final question. What does Rise Up for you mean to you? You know, I I think that you have to take care of yourself in a way where you perform the best that you can in this life that you have been given, right? And so the to me, rising up for yourself is really showing up for what you have that is unique mm -hmm. and that is absolutely yours and that nobody else can replicate. And, and I think that it's important for whomever is listening right now that yes, there are 7 billion human beings in the world, but each one of us has a very specific thing that nobody else has. And it has to do so much with your upbringing, the experiences you've had, the things that you have seen, the ex everything is an mm -hmm. amalgamation of everything that surrounds you and who you are. And I think that Rising up for yourself to me is that beauty that and that incredible charisma and energy that comes from the uniqueness of what you have to offer. And so I think the world is ready for whomever wants to show who they are and rise up for themselves. Oh, I love that. Maria, thank you for being on the podcast today. It's been just an honor to have you. Thank you, Lauren, for what you do. And thank you for everybody who's listening. I hope that you can rule the world with your ideas and your creativity and you can rise up for yourself too. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. Isn't she amazing? Fantastic having her on today. The the confidence and the the drive and the passion for what she's doing and success that she's created has been amazing. We would love to welcome you, our audience, to one of our neat programs that we're running in the beginning of 2022. It's called our Master Success Coaching Program. If you want more information on it, text MASTER to 949-416-06. 71. That's master to 949-416-0671. Or you can go to the URL directly on our Facebook page, go.riseupforyou.com slash master coaching. We'll see you in the program. I'm Lauren Sweeney, Vice President here at Rise Up For You. It's been my pleasure to be your host.